Hi guys. <laughs> it has been it's been a it's been a minute. Um but there's reasons for all this. So yeah. Beginning of April I found out I was pregnant. The premises. I mean, it's not uncommon for first time moms, so don't get me wrong, um, to go past their due date, but I was hoping, since genetically speaking, my mom had me and my siblings early. I think she said I was the only one that almost made it, you know, to 40. I think I was one either 38 or 39 weeks. But the rest of my brother and my sister, like, they were born early. My brother was a preemie at that. So, uh, sure you got me. Look at that. Yep. Still pregnant. Hi. I decided to start recording because I um, think I might have a baby between tomorrow and Sunday. Um, tomorrow is Christmas Eve of all days. So today I um, went to the birthing center because I am 41 weeks and what babe let's see tuesday wednesday thursday friday four days 41 weeks and four days so they decided to well i'm not gonna say they i had a decision to make as far as do i want to try to give my cervix more time or do i just want to nip it in the bud and do try the balloon um, induction. So when I went to the my appointment yesterday, they um, I was still barely dilated. Um, when I went in, so I made the decision to try the balloon induction and we had a game plan if they couldn't, because you have to be somewhat dilated to get the balloon in. So if they weren't able to get the balloon in, we were just going to go to the hospital. Um, however, they were able to get the balloon in because I was a centimeter dilated when I got there. So they was able to get the balloon in, thank God. Um, and while they were positioning the balloon, I dilated even more and... By the time they finished putting the balloon in, she said I was like two and a half centimeters dilated. Um, so the balloon is supposed to give me, get me to at least four, three to four centimeters dilated. I am having contractions, especially when I stand up, which is why I'm trying to keep moving around um, cause I've, I've noticed that I don't have as many contractions whenever I'm just sitting here. Um, so they're not super intense yet, but they are intense enough to make me, my walk extremely slow. Cause I am getting one right now. Yeah. 
Marcus is doing all the things to make sure I'm good. He's doing a great job. I'm trying. Rinse it off before I showed y'all. It's about 6 45 in the morning. So, this is what was in me. One was above my cervix, and the other one was like, I think it's in the vagina or something. So, it put pressure on it. Either way, yes, it was in me, and all this was hanging out of me. And every time I went to the bathroom, they told me to tug on it. Pull it down. To put more pressure and once it fell out that meant I was four centimeters dilated so much relief from this being pulled out but yeah so we're about to head to the birthing center Currently we're at the birthing center and our lovely birthing midwife, um, Angela, has uh, given her a bunch of magic potions. <laughs> and um, the magic potions, I guess, are supposed to help ripen the um, cervix. And she's just been contracting there since she's been here. Checked her probably like an hour or two ago. Said she was somewhere between four and seven, mainly because the bag from the water bag that he's in um, was like literally sitting inside the hole, and it's like kind of hard to check, I guess, um, inside the um, the cervix to see how dilated she is. They'll check her later this year how much she's progressed, but mainly they're, right now they're just waiting for the water to break. Um, and she's just resting, going in and out of contractions, lasting probably a minute to two minutes, usually, when we're timing them. So I'm not sure how far apart, because they're kind of sporadic, but uh, I'll see if she wants to talk to y'all. Let's see. 
Go on the top. No, okay. Just some nauseous. Some nauseous right now. I'm um, getting her a snack on some apples. Um, and hopefully she can eat the cheese and stuff. But apple slices, maybe some caramel, and we're gonna do some stuff. And I order my food. Um, and it should be here soon. But well, progress it is, and we'll see how things go. Bye. We was at the birthing center, and we were doing a lot of stuff to, to try to uh, get her to dilate naturally, but honestly, it, it was working. She was contracting and everything like that and everything, but it just wasn't progressing at all. Like, her service was still thick. Um, yeah, we was there for about 12 hours, and no progress from, from four centimeters. Like, um... The midwife that was there, she was doing everything she could, but I honestly actually was just super tired, um, exhausted. She really couldn't put the effort into it like she wanted to just because she didn't have the energy to do it because we hadn't gotten no sleep for the past, like, maybe a day or two. Um, now going on literally probably like two or three days without sleep, consistent sleep. We were in and out of sleep probably like 10, 15 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes here. She probably got some sleep like through, like right after every single contraction, but it's not something that can actually get it to where she can actually recoup some energy or something like that. But um, long story short, we're here at the hospital. So she got the epidural, but honestly, once she got the epidural, her body just took over. Um, and she's been on the epidural probably about like maybe two hours. <clears throat> and her, she's already at like eight centimeters. <laughs> so currently it's like 10.55. Um, yeah, currently it's 10.55. They are probably predicting he'll be here by like 1 a.m. on Christmas Day. Um. scary one uh i <laughs> learned things that i didn't even know was possible that your uterus can get infected didn't know that um so baby boy wasn't handling the contractions well and i had been basically in labor for almost two days um and so it was decided that I need to be transferred to the hospital from the birth and center. And sorry, I think he's about to wake up. Um, transferred to the hospital, got here. Then the discussion became your body's too tired. 
even if we get you fully dilated, it doesn't look like you have the energy to push. So the second thing that I was trying to steer far, far away from um, was getting the epidural. Ended up getting it um, because I was too tired. Like I was wore out. And the midwife and my doula talked to me about it, and I folded because they were right. I mean, I was too sleepy, you know. So then, got the epidural. <laughs> Beautiful job done by the anesthesiologist. He knew I was scared, knew I was worried. He was so nice. Um, thanks, Clint. No, you're probably never going to see this, but thank you. Um, so, got the epidural. Unfortunately, a side effect of the epidural can be the shakes or shivers. So, I felt like I was cold. Um, so, they gave me a warm blanket. Um, they had to put in the catheter, of course, because I can't pee if I got the epidural um which initially I didn't feel nothing so I didn't feel them put the catheter in or anything um so the contraction started and I had and the third thing I was trying to avoid was Pitocin because I know that that can like kind of stress out the baby so Luckily, they didn't put me on Pitocin because my body, once I was relaxed because I had the epidural, dilated on its own. So I got to nine centimeters. They came and checked me. Um, I started feeling the pressure to push. Um, but then, yeah. They was like, your legs are super hot. And I'm like, oh, well, she gave me a heated blanket. And they was like, no, this is abnormally hot. So when they checked my forehead, I think I was 98 degrees or something. But when they put it in my mouth, the thermometer in my mouth or under my uh, armpit, I was over 100. <laughs> um, so I had got a fever. And... They were watching the baby's heart rate, and during the uh, during contractions, his heart rate would drop, and it would start struggling to get back up. So they gave it, you know, like a another hour or so, and then finally they. Uh, made the decision that well I had to make the decision to get a c-section because now the baby is at risk um and I was starting to feel pain from the catheter so that was bothering me a lot every time I had a contraction I would feel pain and they said it was because the baby's head and where it was positioned was pushing it it was a lot um I had the C-section, and what they don't tell you, or at least what I did not know, is that you can have chest pain during C-section. So first, it was, you're going to feel pressure. Like, I already knew that. You feel a lot of pressure, but that's it. Me, I could feel the catheter, so I was hurting from that. And then my chest started hurting and my anxiety kicked in the gear and I'm like telling the anesthesiologist like, you know, my chest is really hurting. Is this normal? And he's like, actually it is. So, but as much as it was hurting, I started panicking. And so... Marcus came over trying to calm me down. They get baby out. I told Marcus to go to baby because I want him to make sure he's okay and that be his focus. 
and he he went over there but then he eventually came back and i told him i was like no i don't think you need to be over here because i knew that he would worry because i was starting to get the shakes again while they were doing their thing and my chest was hurting and i didn't i knew he was gonna worry so um baby boy was fine he did um poop in while in the womb and I guess he inhaled some of it. So they were basically patting his back really hard to make him throw it up or whatnot. But yeah, he's fine. Six pounds, eight ounces. Born on Christmas Day at 5.38 a.m. We just got discharged from the hospital. A lot of things had happened. Well, no, I'm not sure to talk about it, but uh, like I said, nurse practitioner just came in. Um, and they released us. Well, they're going to be releasing us soon. So they're putting the orders in. And we'll get to be sent home. Yeah. Um, we can't dress you just yet. Because they got to cut your things off. Yeah, my hands are cold, aren't they? This is how you show up on TV? Crying? But, like I said, good news is we're about to go. Ash is excited. I'm excited to get to go home. Yeah.